be right back. Hi guys, it's Fervain again. Welcome to my channel. You know, making YouTube videos is sometimes literally what gets me. I was gonna say out of bed in the morning, but I'm definitely in bed making this video. But definitely there's a part of my brain that's like, come on, you wanna make that video today and you know you have to go to work in an hour and a half and you know that after you get home from work, it's gonna be pitch black outside and way too dark for filming. So if you wanna film that today, you better film it now. Today, I wanted to talk about a little something and see what you guys think and have to say about this topic. And um, also, I thought, well, I talk, I might open <laughs> some more of these. I got some more of these mushroom keychain um, blind boxes and I'm really hoping from Amanita and I opened one on my last Kanokaniya haul um, and I got a cute one and um, it's on my car keys. This is the one that I got. I think it's pretty cute. It doesn't want to focus but it's still cute. Look it's even got little gills down there. The thing that I want to talk about before I get to opening any of these, is the difference between having a spiritual experience and perceiving spiritual beings versus playing fantasy pretend. And the reason that I want to talk about this is because I am a great skeptic. Um, I've been a skeptic my whole life, and my skepticism has been my uh, biggest kind of hurdle in my magical journey, because if you know anything about magic, you know that a lot of the way that magic works depends on belief. And that's not like a, if you're a skeptic who's listening to this, um, that might sound like oh, the, the, the gnomes are only real if you believe in them. Um, and it's not... <laughs> that's not exactly what I mean. It's more like, if you want to... So, like, most of the magic that I do, most of the magic that I practice can actually be explained away with the placebo effect. But it's kind of an elaborate... Uh, an elaborate show and and so a, a lot of the magic that I do for myself and for my world is placebo effect magic and so it's like how can I arrange it's or ritualized psychology is another way you could say it so it's like how can I arrange my daily life and arrange the world around me in such a way that kind of tricks my brain into behaving the way that I want my brain to behave. And it's my subconscious brain, so I can't always just say, hey brain, do the thing. You know, you do have to trick it a little bit sometimes. And uh, one of my favorite truths, um, and this is tested, although I'm not gonna link it, you can do your own research, is that the placebo effect works even when you know it's a placebo. But you still have to, you know, give yourself over to it, in a sense. Um, the placebo effect doesn't work if you're telling yourself over and over that it's not going to work. And so that's what I mean when I say that my skepticism has been uh, my biggest hurdle in my witchcraft. And I'm finding myself... How do I say this? I'm finding myself more lately in situations with my magical practice and my spiritual experience where I'm having experiences that I did not design or create, at least not consciously. Um, and I'm having to ask myself, um, are these experiences something real that I am perceiving with my subtle senses, um, or is this some sort of fanciful, fantastical, wishful thinking, like, I want my life to be more magical, and so I am imagining that it is, and so I'm imagining that these 
immaterial beings are speaking to me and that they're, you know, that I can see these energy patterns moving in my house. And I don't want to discount people who um, do have more consistent and more, um, I guess, convincing um, experiences of seeing immaterial things and patterns and shifts. Because I know that there are people who, or at least people who claim to, you know, see auras regularly or see energy patterns moving regularly, like as a part of their daily life. I am not one of those people. I'm not one of those people who just sees these things, whether I try to or not. And so when I, you know, look through, you know, when I feel something weird in my living space and I go get my hagstone and I look through my hagstone and I peer into the corner and I feel as though I see not when I say see I do not mean perceive with my optical nerve I mean I see it's like I sense with a subtle sense like I see in my mind's eye overlaid over what I perceive with my optical nerve and I've talked about this sort of seeing and this sort of vision in my um my ghost story my paranormal vlog a couple videos back but then when I look through the hagstone and I, you know, see like a swirling vortex on the floor of my living room and like scuttling black spots around the corners and the edges of the room, I have to ask myself, am I looking and seeing something that's not there because I want to see something? Am I looking so hard that I'm seeing something that's not there just because I want to? Or am I actually perceiving movements in subtle energy and depending on various hypotheses about what those things were, um, potentially like some sort of etheric beings or entities in my dining room, living room, house? think on that for a minute. We're going to open this first mushroom box. I am hoping for an Amanita. Um, this is the one I have right here. I really, really, really want this one. I also, uh, I'll settle for this one. It's super cute. Um, I kind of don't want this one. This one's really cool. I'd be happy to get that one. All three of these are pretty cute. Um, really, this is the only one I really don't want. Also, I have allergies. And I don't like it. I grew up in Southern California and I never had allergies in my life. And I lived in Texas for six years before I ever had any allergies. And now it's the worst. Is there a placebo effect to make my allergies go away? Is there a magic spell to get rid of my allergies? Not an Amanita, but it is a cutie pie. Let's open it up. These boxes were $5 each, and I know it's kind of ridiculous for me to be spending $20 on mystery rubber mushrooms. I'm off of there. He's a cutie pie, but I figured I wanted to hang whatever ones I got. Um, I want to hang from my rear view mirror, the, the rear view mirror in my car, because I think they're pretty cute. Ah, come back, mushroom. I wonder what kind of mushroom this one's supposed to be. It's all in Japanese, and none of them are labeled any- Oh, they are labeled on this side. I feel like I should remember enough Japanese to be able to read this. On this one, it, it says, Gan Take. <laughs> the little one, it says, Mushroom. This one says, Tamagotake, which I think means like egg mushroom. I think that one says Matsutake. Okay, we're done playing the read Japanese game. I've been out of college for too long. Do you hear my voice and what this juniper pollen is doing to me? I am healed. I am well. I have no allergies. I've never had allergies. I breathe free and clear. Let's see if it works. Water is the source of all life. Water is the divine flow. Water will flush through me all of the things I am releasing, including my allergies. This is the placebo effect. Okay, 
guys. We're here to talk about this thing. And it's a complicated, confusing thing. And so, so I don't, when I'm examining the question of when I look in my dining room floor and I see, <laughs> and I see a swirling vortex surrounded by scuttling critters around the edges or scuttling black spots, whatever you want to call it. They were scuttling. And I have, I have to ask myself, am I seeing this because it's there or am I seeing this because some part of my subconscious wants to see it? And I tell you what, it's definitely not my conscious brain that wants to see it because all told, at the end of the day, the problems that I have to deal with and the problems that I would like to deal with, I don't want to deal with the problem of what to do with a portal and a bunch of black etheric bugs living in my living room, dining room. It's like one big room, so that's why I keep changing my mind on what kind of room it is. And because it was more of our dining room before, and then we moved to the table and found the portal, and now it's more like a living area. We, 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 we've... I spent the entire last week, this is why I'm still behind on my pink moon challenge, guys. I spent my entire last week staying up, like, a lot late at night, like, many times through the night, trying to figure out what to do with this dark fog that was living in our house, apparently. That's sure what it seemed like and you got to understand guys I got a roommate I got a housemate she's a witch and we're both experiencing this we both experienced this and we both sensed like a swirling something I don't it was like like she sensed a darkness we both sensed a fog and it was very strange and I will make a video that's more about like this whole experience because when we were both searching for information on like what the fuck is this is this even real what do we do about it if it is um there was not a whole lot of information to be found we did get some help from some other witches in our extended circle um but basically um we're gonna make a video for you guys about what to do if a portal appears in your living room floor surrounded by black energetic bug beings sucking your life and energy away. How to evict a dark fog entity from your living space. So you're either watching this right now like, oh my god, I've had this same experience going on in my head. I never know how to tell if the things in my head are real or not. Or you're watching this like, this bitch cray. And honestly, I'm not sure which one I am. I'm not sure if I'm the one who's like, me too, or if I'm the one who's like, this bitch cray. This one right here, me. Let's open another mushroom. And so, yeah, I, I, it, it seems to me that with the amount of trouble that we've gone through to evict these unpleasant energetic entities from our living space. You guys get to see it before I do. What is it? They better be fucking cute. Oh my god, it's the same one! Guys. Rude. 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 Well, we got two of the same one. Maybe Sean can have this one. <laughs> update Sean does have this one and he hung it from his rear view mirror so now we have matching rear view mirrors woo but it sure seems like where's the one it can be friends with here it is it sure seems like a lot of trouble to go through like you know we've spent we spent entire nights up in this fog not sure you know, trying to figure out how to protect ourselves from it and how to shield against it and how to bind it and how to eventually, you know, banish it. And how do you close a portal on your living room floor? <laughs> is there even a portal on your living room floor? Better close it just in case. If there isn't one, it was never a problem anyway. If there is one, now it's closed. And 
It just seems like a lot of trouble to go through for something I made up. And it also seems like if I made it up, then she did a pretty good job of making up exactly the same thing at exactly the same time. I don't think either of us are very good cold readers. Even our subconscious, I don't know, maybe our subconsciouses are better cold readers than we are. But I just, it just doesn't, my subconscious doesn't usually make up this sort of thing. I've never had this sort of experience before of being like, oh, what sort of draining foggy entities are living in my house. But it was like, as soon as we moved the table, we were start. we felt like stuck in this house. I can't talk about this. I'm gonna get into this whole thing. I'm gonna get into this whole long story. We don't have time for it right now. Speaking of mushrooms, I wanted to show you this. I got two pins at Kanokuniya as well when I went back to get my mushrooms to open. And they're both really cute. I'm gonna put them on my Starbucks apron. I don't know why this doesn't want to show you anything up close, but we're just gonna show it to you from this far away. It's a little smiling mushroom. And I got another pin, and it's Bartholomew's little sister. I'm gonna open it up so you can see it through the, you know, get the glare. But it just, it seems like, I have trouble imagining that our subconsciouses would go to the trouble of coming up with a story like this just to get the energy in our house moving again, you know, just to get us to enjoy being in our space again and feel good in the space again. And really, like, the things that we've done have made a huge difference, a huge difference in how we both feel in this house. And I, as much as I am a witch and I do believe in magic, I try to only believe in good things for good reasons. Isn't she cute? This is Bartholomew's little sister. If you don't know Bartholomew, Bartholomew is my tea pet. And this is his little sister, who's now a pin, who's gonna be on my Starbucks apron. Kinda like my coffee pet. I didn't think about it that way. I'm gonna have to come up with a name for this one, but I don't have a name for it yet. So, two happy little pin friends gonna join my coffee apron. The other thing is, I'm autistic, and I'm not like, I was gonna say I'm not like super autistic, but I'm, I'm pretty fucking autistic. I don't know, I mean like, compared to people who have more severe autism than me, I'm not that autistic. But compared to neurotypical people, I feel really autistic. And one of my like symptoms or expressions of my autism is that I have never been good at playing pretend. And I actually, I had a lot of tension in my friendships as a kid. And I remember like, I would be friends with someone for a little while, like maybe a couple years. And then eventually I would just get fed up with their lies and their bullshit. And I would dump them, like not like, we're not longer friends anymore, but I would just like stop hanging out with them. And sometimes they would like really piss me off. And I look back and I honestly don't know if these kids were like manipulative liars or if these kids were just playing pretend and I didn't get it. I honestly don't know. And it's like, you know, like things they told me were like, uh, okay, one of them, uh, we'll call her Elizabeth told me that she was adopted and she was really a princess and her real name was Diamond and she'd been separated from her other sisters at birth and her other sisters were named Ruby, Emerald, and Sapphire and someday she was gonna go back to her kingdom. Yeah, you see where this is going. So it's like, that's like, if you're just a, like a kid playing pretend, that's like a totally valid, yeah, sure, play pretend. I was not there for it. I was like, Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Sure. And then the kid, like, I'd kind of, like, humor them, and then she'd go home, and I'd be like, she thinks I'm that dumb to really believe this. She thinks I'm gonna fall for all her bullshit. Like, I know none of this is true. And then take also, for example, uh, we'll call her Emily, told me that she was adopted. <laughs> Funny, both of these kids actually were adopted, although um, Elizabeth didn't actually know that for a fact. Um, 
<laughs> but Emily did know she was adopted and she just lived with her mother and she told me that her real mother was a fairy and she was also a fairy and moreover she could fly as long as no one was watching and so if I would just turn around when we were alone and not look at her she could fly for a br very brief period and then I would turn back around and I could look at her again and she would not be flying and this was her story and I this was in like third grade and at this point I was like come on we're all adults here we know this is fucking fantasy and you're lying to me and I'm not gonna tolerate this bullshit like there's no possible way this could be true when I say I'm a great skeptic this is where I come from <laughs> little kid me refusing to tolerate other kids games of pretend knowing that about myself about my own history with playing pretend and you know I had dolls growing up and I loved dolls I loved to arrange them and dress them up and I would get together with my neighbor Claire and we would get all of our Barbies together and all of our Barbie clothes together and we would kind of combine them into a, a giant Barbie bin of magic and uh, you know we'd play with and dress up each other's Barbies and play with them together and by that I mean that she would spend about 20 minutes dressing up her Barbies and giving them you know, names and characters and biographies and then she'd spend about three hours um, acting out soap opera like fantasy stories of balls and princes and sibling rivalries and marriages and births and all sorts of things really just like a whole soap opera and I would spend two hours uh, dressing up my dolls and then one hour just like watching her play with her dolls and following along with her story and also thinking that it was highly over dramatic and that really like all of the characters in this story were being quite silly and they were causing a lot of drama and tension and negativity that just seemed really unnecessary. <laughs> if I had only known, if I had only known. See, now I look back at that and I'm like, oh, yep, I've been autistic this whole time. Yep, definitely, it's definitely the case. But knowing all that about how, how good I am at playing pretend and how well I tolerate um, pretending, it. And I'm, you know, I'm shit at role play games. I, I would play Sims, but I would spend, you know, hours and hours and hours um, making families and building and decorating houses, all the cheat codes, obviously. Uh, and then I'd play each family for just a little while and I'd get bored and I'd want to create something new. And I always wanted to write a fantasy book in school and I spent a long time coming up with and illustrating all the gods and goddesses of the fantasy religion and all the different places in the fantasy world and the different, uh, you know, I made maps, I built cultures and worlds. I, I got so into the world building and uh, pretty into the character building as well. And I never got further than a page and a half into a story. I never did. I'm just, I'm just not good at playing pretend. And so when I start to experience things in my life that seem at once, you know, they, you know, they seem hard to defend as reality. They're definitely immaterial. And yet, I just have a lot of trouble believing that any part of me would make this shit up or would want to tolerate making a shit up because I don't want to stay up all night smoking out my house if I can achieve the same effect by moving some furniture around and throwing away some crap and sweeping. And when the two of us, you know, may maybe, maybe my roommate and I are playing off of each other. And, you know, maybe we're picking up on each other's subtle feelings and validating each other's subtle feelings and you know, maybe it's not that we're both seeing the same thing, but maybe it's both that, that we f both feel that something is off. And 
as we're trying to find explanations, you know, we're playing off of each other's, um, thoughts and, and, you know, confirming each other's suspicions without really good, good reason. Um, and maybe that's the case. But then, you know, there were times when we were getting rid of it, when, you know, we did, we were talking to the fog entity, asking it to leave through the portal and some things happened and I felt like, you know, before it had felt like we're here, you know, ready for battle, ready to get rid of this thing. And then at a certain point in the negotiations, we'll say, I felt like a shift of the energy from like, from like aggression and fear and one-upmanship to sadness. And I feel this and I'm trying to put words to it, but I haven't yet put any words to it. And then Laura says, I feel a shift. And I was like, yeah. And then she's like, like, now it just feels sad. And so, you know, whatever it is that's happening, whether it's a portal or a fog or whatever it is that's ha or, you know, I don't know what other explanations there are. See, at this point, there actually having been a portal and a fog entity and beetle entities in my house does seem like the simplest explanation because any other explanation is just so ridiculously complicated. I, I don't know how else we could all be arriving at these same conclusions. And, and not only that, but when we first saw the, the, the swirling vortex in the floor, and I felt, I don't know, I felt like it was a portal to somewhere. Like it went down, like it was a door, like there was something on the other side. And and I, I had called it a hole. I, you know, I'd said like, you know, don't step in the hole. I, I'm, like I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to get some sage, don't step in the hole. And you know, we were kind of referring to it this way and feeling this about it. Then Ella realized that it was located right under my bathtub on the next story and we remembered that another friend of ours Abigail had had some experiences in that bathtub where she, at least she claimed and I happen to believe her at this point that the house was speaking to her and we went to read the notes from that night and the things that the house had said to her and we couldn't make much sense of them, so we called her, and we asked her about that night, and she said, yes, I remember it quite well, you know, what, but, you know, what's brought this up? Why are you calling me about this now? Laura said, and really, she said nothing more than this. You know, we moved the table out of the corner in the dining area, and it feels like something really weird is here. And Abigail said, oh, so you found the black hole. So to have somebody who's not even there with no word clues about the sort of thing that we'd been experiencing to diagnose it as pretty much exactly the same thing that we'd been feeling it was, that makes me feel like it's real. Look at this. Can you see my goosebumps? Probably not fucking camera and then you know to be fair this whole experience with my house with the citrine palace is what has really kind of like brought this to the forefront of my mind recently but I've had other similar like spiritual experiences or you know encounters with spiritual beings in the past at least that's how I would describe them where it is also you know it, there it's more hard to know it's it's more difficult to know is this wishful thinking or is this a spiritual experience if i'm dining alone while mysteriously stra trapped in a foreign country uh in the free hotel that the air that the airline airline is that what you call something that owns airplanes that you fly on airline why does that sound like a weird word, weird word right now? It's called an airline, right? American Airlines. Yes. Okay. Everything's gonna be okay. You know, if, if you missed the flight, 
the only flight to where you're trying to get to because your previous fl flight was delayed and they put you up in a hotel overnight in a foreign country where you've never been before. Because of this delay, because of this being stuck overnight in a foreign country with very little to do and no money, because of that I end up reading my rune book and delving into my study of the runes really deeply for the first time ever. And then that evening at dinner at the hotel, the god of the runes appears to me across the table at dinner. Is that fantasy? It's certainly something I would have liked to have happened. No one else was there to experience or validate it. Or was it a spiritual experience to encourage me in my studies and let me know that I'm supported and not as alone as I feel and that this is indeed the time to be studying these things? Which of those is true? Am I going crazy? Is my subconscious playing pretend without my ego's permission? Am I having a spiritual experience? Am I being visited by a god? Is there a fog entity in my house, or was there? Was there a portal in my house? Were ethereal beetle entities sucking my energy and boring portals through the floor of my house to harvest it and bring it to other dimensions? I don't know. It sounds crazy. I know it sounds crazy. But I guess it sounds less crazy than both of us being exactly the same kind of crazy at once. So I guess my question goes out to all the other skeptical witches out there. How do you determine what you believe to be genuine spiritual experience? And what's fantasy or pretend? And... Do you find value in making that distinction? And what do you see as the dangers of distinguishing incorrectly? Or do you think it's not a big deal? Because part of me thinks that whether or not there was a portal and a fog entity and beetle entities draining our energy, whether or not that's true or fantasy, the fact is, you know, we did some things. We banished them, they're gone, and they're not there now. So whether they were there or not before, they're not there now. And we feel better in our house, and the energy is moving. And so it does seem that even if it is fantasy, to participate in the fantasy was beneficial. But is it ever beneficial to believe things that aren't the truth? Is it the truth? I'll tell you what, my roommate's dead convinced that it is. She's not as much of a skeptic as I am. I've always been kind of a mediator between the skeptical and the magical. And I guess I want to participate fully in the magical, but I don't want to be factually wrong when I do it. But I don't know that there is such a thing. I think you arrive at a point where two alternatives both lack enough evidence to be proved for certain. And perhaps... It's better to choose the belief that gives you more power in the situation than the belief that gives you less. And it seems to me that magical beliefs tend to give you more power in those situations because at least if you believe in your own magical power, you know, if there's an entity draining your energy, you can banish it, you can do something about it. Whereas if I'm just experiencing chronic fatigue and confusion, particularly when thinking about rearranging furniture in my house. Also, my roommate experiences the same thing, particularly when thinking about rearranging furniture in our house. And all sorts of other weird things happened. I really will have to make a vlog about this whole experience. Let's open... Let's open the last mushroom. But I want you to answer my questions. How do you distinguish between spiritual experience and fantasy? And what's the value in that distinction? Oh no, it's the egg! I'm kind of sad. It's the egg. I 
I tell you what, I'm definitely not psychic enough to be able to tell what mushroom was in these boxes. Sean's gonna think I'm so silly. He told me not to do this. He told me not to go back and get these blind boxes. But this one's gonna live in my car. I'm kind of excited about it. And maybe Sean can have this one. I can live in his car. Well, all right, guys. Let me know down in the comments below, as usual, whether or not you think I'm crazy. Also, whether or not you've ever had an experience like this and wondered if you were crazy. Uh, if you have had experiences like this, please let me know whether you decided uh, whether or not you were crazy, and if so, what you decided, and if not, why not? Why you haven't decided? Um, yeah, if you have any good recommendations on reading material and how to, you know, things I should look into <laughs> if this is what my life is looking like, um, please post them in the comments below. I'm happy to follow up on your suggestions. If you're not yet and you want to be, don't forget to subscribe by hitting that subscribe button down below. And if you really want to be kept in the loop about all my future thoughtful, skeptical, magical content, um, hit that alarm bell so you get notifications every time I post. Otherwise, you're only going to get notifications very rarely, if ever, thanks YouTube. Please do give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it at all or gained anything from it. If you watched this far, come on, what does it cost you? It doesn't cost you anything and it helps me out a whole lot. So I hope to hear from many of you guys down in the comments below and I will see you all again very, very soon. I hope you have a wonderful, magical day. Mm -hmm.